Cruise news time. And look, Mr. Toad, you're going to have to move out of the way. We're getting ready to go on our own wild ride. A huge announcement coming out from Norwegian Cruise Line. They're going to be cruising from a city that honestly I didn't even know was on the water. We also have a big story about tourism phobia. I didn't even really know that was a thing. And well, do you like to make fun of people that are late back to the cruise ships, pier runners? Well, that activity is being discussed. Will it be banned? Will you be banned? Who knows? Cruise mockers and shamers beware. Uh, cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lira Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face. I feel like a bodybuilder. For your face. For your face on a Wednesday. Wednesday, the 18th of July. 2024, and I'm less than 24 hours than jumping in the passenger seat of a stranger's car who's offering me candy, promising me a ride to Cocoa Beach so that on Friday I can get on one of the world's newest cruise ships, the second largest cruise ship in the world, the Utopia of the Seas, Seas, Seas. To say that I'm excited would be an understatement. And so, excitingly, all of the cruise news is kind of uh, exciting and weird today, and it seems apropos. I do have an update uh, about something that we talked about a couple days ago, but I'll save that. Let's get first into the cruise news. Norwegian Cruise Line coming out with a huge, a huge announcement that they would be doing cruises in 2026 from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia Freedom. Love. Shout out Ludacris. I did not even know that Philadelphia was on the water. That's how unfamiliar with Pennsylvanian geography I am. But that's dang exciting. They're going to put the Norwegian Jewel cruise ship over there. It's going to start doing sailings in April of 2026, going over to Bermuda. Beware of the Bermuda Triangle. I think you got Amelia Earhart and a Sasquatch. Uh, I know she was in the Pacific. Save your comments. But yeah, that's pretty dang exciting. I love cruising from the Northeast. I love going to New York City. New York City. I love going to New York City. I love my stop in Boston. I've never been to Philly I would love to go to the city of brotherly love, but see the Liberty Bell and um, get on a cruise ship, especially that cruise ship. I was just recently on the NCL Jade, which is uh, in the family there, sister ship of the Jewel. And it's a really nice, uh, the medium sized cruise ship. If you don't like a ton of people on your cruise, check out those. But that's exciting. Uh, I'm excited. I don't know if anybody else is excited. Is anybody else excited about cruises from Philadelphia? Um, is that where they make the cream cheese? I like cream cheese. Uh, let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. Quick reminder before we get to the next cruise news story. If you are a channel member, first and foremost, thank you for supporting us this way. And well, to uh, get back, we have our monthly member live stream that's happening tonight at 8 p.m. So if you're a channel member, I would love for you to come by and say hello again. Thank you for your support. And now on to the next cruise news story. Cruise news story number two is a scam alert. I was reading the story about a lady who, I think she received an email. This is the problem. She received an email saying, hey, you might get a cruise upgrade. Give us a call at this number. So she dialed the number, dip, 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 dip. somebody answered and she's like, hey, I got this email about an upgrade. They're like, cool, what's your booking number? She gives them the booking number and they're like, oh yeah, you might possibly get an upgrade, but we notice on your account, you have an outstanding balance of $294. And before we can even discuss an upgrade, you're going to have to take care of that $294 and then she pays it. She gets off the phone with them without getting an upgrade. She gets off the phone with them and she says, wow, that seems like a weird interaction. Uh, maybe that's not right. So she goes to the website of the cruise line that she had booked with and uh, it was a different phone number. So she calls up the phone number on the website and is like, hey, uh, I, I just got charged $294 for a deck fee. And I just want to make sure that that was right. And they're like, no, that's not right. We don't charge any, we don't charge a deck fee. You done got fished by reading the email. And then you got scammed uh, by calling the person, probably some social engineering in there also. And uh, there was nothing that she could do about the $294 other than notify her financial institution to have the charge blocked and reversed. And it seems like all's well that ends well, except... When that charge got blocked in reverse, the scammer, 
who had her confirmation number, called the cruise line and canceled her cruise. She got an email saying that her cruise was canceled. It was a Mother's Day cruise, $900 cruise for her and her family. She calls up, this was Carnival, so she calls up Carnival and says, hey, I just got an email that my cruise was canceled. And they're like, yeah, somebody just called them with your confirmation number, your booking number, and canceled your cruise. And uh, she's like, okay, well, could I just book another cruise? And they're like, no, the ship is full. We sold your cabin. You cannot get on the ship. So uh, like I said, scam alert, cautionary tale, be careful of the emails that you're opening. And she gives great advice in this article. Before you call any phone number, just go to the website of the corporation that you're trying to interact with. This goes well beyond cruising. Just go to the corporation of the company that you're interacting with and get the official phone numbers so that you don't get fished and scammed and cancellated. Um, that would suck. That would suck big time. There's some scummy people out there. I just did a cursory search on TikTok today and there's four Tony Barnett's with my picture on it. There's several Lolita Loca TikTok accounts with the picture of myself and Jenny that kind of match our channel picture. And so uh, be careful out there. Uh, there's only, we, we only have one official TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. And so, uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be careful. Don't, you know, if anybody reaches out and says we're us, that's probably not the case. So, um, yeah, have you ever been scammed that way? Gotta be careful. Leave a comment below. Cruise news story number three, and we've heard about it all over the world. Anti-cruise sentiment. Uh, people in Bar Harbor saying too many cruise ships. People in Key West saying too many cruise ships. People in Amsterdam saying too many cruise ships. People in Italy saying too many cruise ships. People in Spain saying too many cruise ships. And well, while you certainly have to respect the wishes of the locales that you are visiting, there is a big cruise industry out there that has an organization that advocates for them. I'm talking about the Cruise Line International Association, CLIA, and they're coming out and saying, look, uh, this ain't right. This ain't right that all of these places are starting to be so anti-cruising. They released a statement that used a word I'd never heard before, tourism phobia. Clea's European director, Marie Laurent, kind of sums up the problem and, and really what could be a future problem, not only for the cruisers, but also for the destinations in this quote. She says, tourism phobia is not only a problem in Spain, but also in France and other Mediterranean countries. Visitors are increasingly sensitive and the violent attitudes that have been seen in places like Barcelona have an impact on the destination's reputation. Look, the math is not hard to do on this one. If places that cruise ships go become less favorable to cruise tourism, then cruise ships will just have to go somewhere else. It's an interesting and subtle conversation. You even have like the director of CLIA in Spain. His name's Alfredo Serrano. He's just reminding people that, you know, I, I understand that you guys aren't down with tourism, but there's places like Saudi Arabia that's making million dollar investments in their tourism and in welcoming cruise tourism to their area. So, you know, like I said, the math is not hard. If uh, these places continue to push back against cruising, it, it might be a scenario where uh, cruising takes their ball and goes plays in a different playground. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens, but uh, I, I'm just grateful that now I know the word tourism phobia. And uh, I guess some people have it. What do you think about that? Now, we have to talk about mockery and shaming and whether or not a cruise line will be bold enough to ban it when it comes to pier runners, late cruise passengers. But before we do that, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. And I just remembered I promised you an update. Uh, really a big thank you to everybody who chimed in on what I could do to make giving blood easier. Uh, these are the steps that I took. The people said drink water the day before, drink warm water the day of, and uh, I did that. 120 ounces on the day before I gave blood, 64 ounces of warm water uh, between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. when I gave blood. I've also been going to the gym every day, so people said, you know, uh, hot compress or to exercise. So I did get some exercise in that morning and it was beautiful. Just so one sticker and they gave, I gave all the blood. They didn't have to stick me four times. So thanks to all of you, uh, retired nurses, active nurses, phlebotomists, armchair, blood giver, conversation, everybody out there. 
with all, people that are in the same circumstance, uh, a lot of comments. And uh, that's what makes this community beautiful. We're able to help each other with uh, phlebotomy issues. Phlebotomy, such a lonely word. Uh, shout out Ludacris. That's two shout outs for Ludacris. I try not to do that, but uh, that phlebotomy shout out's too good. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Um, if you've cruised for any period of time, you've probably encountered the phenomena known as the peer runner. These are the people that are back after the all aboard time when probably one gangway has already been pulled into the cruise ship. And when there's usually a cadre of cruise officials standing around the other gangway waiting for you to make an appearance so that the cruise ship can leave port. And pier runners come in all shapes and sizes with all kinds of reasons for being late. Some people are late because of bad circumstances. Some people are late because of alcohol. Some people are late because they lost track of time. There's a lot of reasons. But one thing that's almost universally true is that if there is a late person, if there is a pier runner, there will will be people on the cruise ship that are happy to shame them and mock them and yell stuff at them as they're making their way onto the cruise ship. Of course, my favorite peer runner mockery is run, Force, run, run, you gotta run. There's nothing that will enrage a crowd of mockery more than someone who refuses to run the pier. If you got a peer walker, which I made a whole video about a peer walker, I'll make sure I link that at the end. If you run into a peer walker, then the ridicule is ramped up. And uh, yeah, it's like, it, I guess it's one of those uh, last accepted forms of shame and mockery. But apparently not everybody is down to clown. And there has been some calling out of the cruise mockers. And this call out was levied at Carnival brand ambassador John Heald saying, hey man, it ain't right for the mockery and the shaming to go on. Uh, what are you gonna do? Will Carnival ban this behavior? And he, he said, no, we're, you know, we, it's not on the fun times. This isn't an organized event of mockery. We're not in the mockery business. This isn't our doing, but it's what people do. And we can't really control what people do. How are we gonna police people mocking peer runners? So yeah, Carnival's not gonna ban anybody. That's the big question. Should peer runners be mocked and shamed for their tardiness or should we form a neighborhood watch to go from cabin to cabin to shut the mockers down? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, yeah, check out the Cruise Walker video next. Thank you guys so much for checking out this episode. My name's Tony for La Lido Look. Until next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise.